Okay, hopefully this is the lecture that we're all waiting for. So, today we are finally getting to the Schrodinger equation. And I just realized that I think I actually misspelled this, and I do think there is not a C in there. Um, that notwithstanding, this is kind of really the point that, that there's no turning back. You've gotten this far, we're going to finish it out, and the way we're going to do that now is to just math the hell out of it. And what I mean by that is that we are now finally at the point where we can quantitatively talk about what the hell is happening at the deepest level, and not just like qualitatively describe some of the phenomena that we see. So, specifically what I mean is that we are going to begin talking about uh, just a, a, a background on what we call probability theory. And we're going to start with the slightly simpler one. Many of you might have seen the, the basics of probability. You might have even taken a, a course on mathematical probability. So this will all be entirely a review. But some of the notation that we'll be using, specifically to, uh, uh, the notation that's standard for quantum mechanics, may be slightly different than what you've seen. So we're going to discuss the, the probability of discrete variables and discrete functions. And by that, I mean, um, for example, functions that um, as they're basically quantum quantized functions where you can take on certain values, just kind of like how the hydrogen atom, uh, the electron can take on certain energy levels. So we'll describe the probability of measuring these discrete outcomes and that will directly translate eventually to what we see in uh, specifically quantum systems. And then we're going to transition to talking about probability functions based on a continuous variable, which is actually more fundamentally what the Schrodinger equation uses. So we'll see what the connection is here once we fully get to the Schrodinger equation. And by the way, um, I expect when we write this, it will be entirely nonsensical, but you will need to memorize it somehow or another. Um, and, and I guarantee in the act of going through homework and doing problems that that's how you're going to finally be able to like literally dream about it in your sleep. Um, and, and by the way, that is actually what you will likely end up doing if you are spending enough time on this. Uh, I can attest. <laughs> um, so we're going to describe what the, what the Schrodinger equation looks like, but I, I fully intend that you're not going to have a... Uh, um, intuitive feel for it, well, really ever, but especially at this point, it's more just going to be, I want you to see it, and I want you to see what it looks like, and then what we're going to do in the next series of lectures, and this is typically the heart of any good quantum physics course, what we're going to do then is go on to solve it for a variety of more and more complicated systems, but the more complicated they get, the, 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 the more complicated they get, the more they actually describe um, reality at its smallest levels. And then finally, if we have time, uh, I do want to describe at least, um, so we, we're covering probability, we're introducing this, and then I want to at least basically explain how the probabilities that we're describing there actually apply to the Schrodinger equation, which is the way that we predict outcomes in a quantum setting. So this is where the fun really begins, and so don't be afraid of the mathematics, but make sure that if you're not understanding something that you're, you're taking the time to, uh, to do the required reading, to watch the lecture many times, uh, look at other sources, because this is where it real, uh, really will be important for you to get a feel for everything that we're discussing at a, a mathematical level. Now, uh, with that said, I, I do want to mention that I will be following from, at least for this portion of, of the course, I will be following this book right here, which is David Griffith's um, Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. It's the text that I learned from, and I would say that of, of uh, across the, the nation, and I can't speak internationally per se, but um, this is the single most, uh, mo most used book for a uh, first course in quantum theory. Um, it's, this is the older edition, and it has an awesome cover, and you see, by the way, that that's a cat uh, on the front. You flip it, that's a cat that's dead, <laughs> alive, dead, so insert Schrodinger's cat joke here. Um, but there's a new edition, which is much less, uh, it, it's blue, and that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> uh, but so anyway, what, what we're going to talk about here today follows directly from chapter one of this text, and so I strongly encourage you to read through it, and if you accuse me from basically, like, giving a lecture straight from the textbook, I accept that criticism, because I, I really don't think there's a better way to introduce it than what he has. So, as it gets on later in the textbook, I will make adjustments. But anyway, so that's where we're headed, and I'm kind of excited to be at this point now.